one thing he said was like, how often do you actually take a break from what you do in your life, like the busyness of your life? Sometimes I think we take pride into how busy we are, as if that's the goal in life. And I get we don't want to waste our life away or waste time, but at the same time, when we look at the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, productivity isn't one of them. I'm Kyle Hyman from Max Studios, and I want to hike the Camino, because these stories just get me pumped. If you've missed any of the past episodes, don't worry. We're going to leave them archived on our YouTube channel and in our podcast feed, where you can like and subscribe. But we've heard in these past episodes about how the Camino can be an opportunity to overcome challenges and adversity, a chance to get away from the busyness of life, spend time in quiet. And Dalia Sefuente is no stranger to being busy and really saw this as an opportunity. I decided to go on the Camino because whenever Dr. Valderas was presenting the the Camino, I had already heard about it. I was already familiar um, with going to Spain and having that pilgrimage. But one thing he said was like, how often do you actually take a break from what you do in your life, like the busyness of your life, and take a moment of quiet and a moment with Christ? For that was like definitely a call out. I'm very busy all the time. And so I wanted I wanted to have a special time like set aside just for Christ, especially um, because I knew it was gonna be at the end of the semester. I already knew I was gonna be carrying a lot of things from um, from my school year with me, and I didn't want that to go into the rest of my summer. And so I really wanted to dedicate that time to spend with Jesus, and so it was really cool. And yeah, I think it was, it was really fruitful. Dahlia talks about what her schedule looked like as a student before the trip. My day-to-day was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot. I would wake up and I would try to do prayer in the morning, but sometimes it was difficult because I would like already start stressing about the rest of the day. Like, what do I need to do? I need to put this paper out for this assignment or go study. And so it was like a mix of like me trying to balance school, but also trying to balance like my work for campus ministry and my work for my household. It was it was a lot to try to get through the day, get the things I needed to be do- like needed to be done. Um, but take the time to kind of have like this examination of conscience for the rest of the day. Like that, that was so hard for me. And I, I felt like I really needed that at least for like the entirety of the semester to like really think about, okay, like what did I experience this semester? And like, how did that, how was that gonna make me grow um, as a person? I think many of us can relate to knowing that we need to make more time for prayer or wanting to make prayer a priority, but there's so many things to distract us. So many things that need to be done. I'm a wallower. I like to wallow. Um, <laughs> and so it was just trying to really let go of like the things that I knew that weren't really like really didn't have a place in my heart anymore. Like they weren't giving me a sense of hope. It was me just like dreading like a nut- something that had already happened. And so I think like one thing like last semester was like I was having a lot of difficulties with my relationships, trying to like balance my time with the people that I care about. That was kind of difficult because I felt like I had like wounded a lot of people because I wasn't prioritizing them and like I wasn't appreciate pr- appreciating them in the moment because I was so focused on the things that I had to do. I was like really thinking about that and really praying over those people while I was walking and I felt kind of like it was like a great sense of love for these people. It's like, even though I'm not there with them, I still love them, I still care for them. And we're still like brothers and sisters in Christ. So we still share that relationship, even though we can't have the same like physical proximity. Being able to have that distance uh, physically, but emotionally and like in my heart, being able to maintain it. How beautiful is that? Recognizing that she isn't appreciating the people around her, but instead focused on the things she has to do. You know, we're commanded to love one another, not love our to-do list. And so she's recognizing this and lifting these people up into prayer while on pilgrimage and focusing on relationships. Then I love that the students are having these meaningful conversations. For example. I have a big fear of judgment. And um, I usually was talking about this with Brian, I think when we were walking. I don't like sharing what I enjoy because I think in the past I've had um, very like niche, like music tastes or like just my friend, like my friend group at the time didn't share it. And so I was like, dang, like no one's gonna appreciate this with me. Um, but I was like talking about this with Brian and he was like, dude, like you are how you are. Like no matter what, what someone like tells you or what someone thinks about it, it's like, that's not gonna change 
like who you are as a person. And so why not just embrace that? Because the people that are going to appreciate you for who you are, they're the ones that are going to stick around. And I was like, thanks, Brian. You're so wise. He is re- he's very wise. Um, but yeah, I think we are we all kind of like talked about like our fear of judgment, especially like going through our faith journey, like realizing that like being Catholic isn't going to look the same for everyone. I thought it was going to be harder because I didn't know these people, but it was actually so much easier to like talk to them about these things because of it. And so they were like, oh yeah, like I'm kind of the same way, but it's like, what, what can you do? Kind of getting out of like getting out of that, like, oh, I, I'm i like weird in this way. Like, okay, what what is someone going to do? Just being able to appreciate myself in that way was, was definitely good. It's obvious it's a life-changing experience for Dahlia. She's bringing back so much. One thing I learned about myself was that I really connect uh, to Christ whenever I'm like in nature. I think there's just like a lot of beauty. That, it's like a simple beauty of it just like being there that doesn't take a lot to appreciate. And so um, I felt like that helped me grow a lot in my prayers. Like, okay, like if I'm overstimulated, like let's just go outside and like sit. I think that has been like a really, really good takeaway, like personally. But I think another one is just get off your phone. <laughs> Your, your life is not your phone. And I think it's hard to kind of like separate that. And then it's like you're seeing what everyone else is doing. But it's just like, just live your life. Just just appreciate what's going on around you. And like take, take a moment to actually like look around and see who's at your right and who's at your left and think about them. Be like, oh, like there's a person right here. What's, what's going on with them? You know, I think that's been like a a big takeaway is just really appreciating the people around you. Your life is not your phone. Wow. How often do we pay more attention to our phones than the real life people around us? Now, this one hurts because it's true in my life. Like so often I feel like finishing a text message or scrolling through all of the comments is more important than the person that's right in front of me. I need to put the phone down and be present with people around me. And on top of all of this, Dahlia wants to be more open with people. Moving forward, I just want to be real with people. I think a lot of times I've tried to hide what I was like going through or how I felt about things just for the sake of it, like not being an inconvenience. But when I do that, it makes it more of an inconvenience. So just being really honest about what's going on or how I feel about things. When you approach someone with honesty, like you're gonna receive honesty. I think that's the way that I wanna approach my relationships now and the people that I do meet. Like, hey, like, this is who I am. I hope you appreciate it, but if not, that's okay too. (laughs) She's committed to seeing the dignity in everyone she meets. And this is something we all need to do, to approach relationships with humility, be ourselves, reaching out to those that seem like they're in need or alone, to be aware of people around us, not just focused in on ourselves. All right, we have one more story for you. It's the one, the only, Father Eduardo, chaplain for this trip, and he's awesome. He talks about how this trip was a metaphor for life, which is really interesting, and how this trip gave him an experience that he could never have on campus. Until then, I'm Kyle Hyman for Mac Studios. God bless.